That's Mount Kephart. It's named for a man who wrote, I owe my life to these mountains. Horace Kephart came to the Great Smoky Mountains to find himself. Instead, he discovered a land made up of a special breed of people who became his people. And for the cause for which they fought, he became their champion. An unlikely mountain hero, Horace Kephart was in turn a Yale librarian and Italian literary scholar and director of the Mercantile Library in St. Louis. There he compiled one of the greatest collections of American frontier history yet assembled. Amidst diaries of long dead mountain men, Horace Kephart's imagination began to kindle. He began to lose himself completely in an imaginary world of pioneer adventure. His calculating mind burned for release. He became lost to the world. Finally, he left both his job and his family and began to drink heavily. In his archives, desperate now and alone, he began searching for the most desolate, God-forsaken part of the world, a back of beyond, he called it. And on an old map, he found it. Here was the last vestige of true wilderness east of the Mississippi, the Great Smoky Mountains. It was 1904 when Horace Kephart first appeared in the Smokies, a troubled man lost again to alcohol with which he waged a lifelong battle. He found his back of beyond in the cabin along Hazel Creek in North Carolina. Slowly a transformation began. The mountain men and women became his friends. The mountains and the people who lived here were now his passion. He systematically recorded all that he observed and he began to write. He moved to Bryson City where he lived the rest of his life and he wrote for magazines, newspapers, journals. He wrote books on camping and hiking. In 1919 he published Our Southern Highlanders, a work against which all writing on these mountains is measured. In the early 20s the national park movement began to take form. Here was a cause he could sink his teeth into. As the foremost authority on these mountains, his articles focused national attention on the plight of the Great Smokies. Horace Kephart did not live to see the national park he fought so hard to establish. He died in 1931, but we can remember him today by hiking the Appalachian Trail, a course he personally charted through these mountains so others could find the beauty and serenity he had discovered. The honor roll that heralds the true founders of a national park is a strange collection of unlikely bedfellows. Horace Kephart's name is near the top of the list. Because he lived and worked here, because of the love of this land and its people, today there's a mountain named after him and a national park here for all of us.